All right, everybody, this is an episode that is specifically dedicated to markers inside of Premiere Pro. And markers are, are used for a few different reasons, but one of the main reasons is basic uh, organization and being able to find uh, certain clips and notes that you're making on on, uh, on clips and on the, the timeline as well. So to start, let's kind of go down on our timeline and talk about markers here. Uh, first of all, the basic command to hit a marker is going to be the letter M. That's a shortcut. If you hit M, it's also this little tab up there right here, we'll add a marker. If you hit M, I want you to notice the difference between uh, this here. It's adding a marker on either the timeline or if you have a clip selected, and you hit M, it'll add the marker on the clip instead. And that's kind of different because if you want markers added on clips or on the timeline uh, for a specific reason, that's going to be important. If you want markers on clips for notes being taken on a specific clip or on an edit inside the timeline, then that's going to be just an important distinction to make there. Undo that. I'm going to deselect my clip here by hitting Control shift a to deselect all. I'm going to hit M to add a marker, and it's added the marker on the timeline. Now, uh, once you've added a marker, if you want to uh, bring, if you want to edit some notes based on that marker right there, you hit M again. If you just get used to hitting M and then M again, it will uh, bring up this uh, this little dialog window here that you can add notes to this specific marker down here. So let's do that again. I'm going to undo that and now my marker's gone. I'm going to find a point. Say we like this shot here on the timeline where this where this tilts down and uh, and reveals that lady down there. I'm just going to hit M, M. So add one M adds the marker. Another M, if it's right on a marker, it's going to open up this dialog for that specific marker. And now you can name that marker. We can say sign on street and then you can even go down the comments and put some, some co add some comments in here if you want to. We can say tilts down to reveal lady in pink coat. I hit OK, and that information is now added to that marker. So if I move in along here, and I want to land on that marker there, I want to see this marker here. You can actually just double click on it like that, and it will jump to the marker, and it also opens up uh, the dialog here, and it's got that notes for that specific marker. Uh, if you just want to land on the marker, you just simply clip, click on it once, it lands on it, then double click on it, it brings open the dialog. Just some quick functions there. Let's add another marker here. I'm going to move down the timeline and I'm going to move behind the time timeline here. And this is just kind of some random footage here. Let's find something that I want to add a marker to. Like uh, right there. This is a second take of that tilting down to reveal this lady here. So I'm going to move back up to the sign. So second take. So I'm going to hit M. And I'm going to hit M again. I'll bring up in this dialog. And I'm going to say second take of street sign. And then I can add more information here. Pink lady still there. Hit OK. But we've added a couple markers here in the timeline. And oftentimes what these markers can be used for is like if a, if a director's sitting down and going through the dailies, he or she can be putting markers on the footage uh, for the editors. If there's multiple people working on these markers, or even if it's just a single person working on an entire project and they need to access their notes later on, and they're finding shots that they like and they want to remember those, a marker can be added either to the timeline or to specific clips. And right now we're just adding them to the timeline. Now, if you want to see something quick here, I'm going to go up to our little button editor here. And up here inside the button editor, you've got these two little icons right here. Go to next marker or go to previous marker. You can actually drag those and drop them down here on your layout here like that. And now you've got your go to uh, previous marker and go to next marker and hit OK. Now they're there under your buttons. But if you don't like that, you can actually just hover over these and look. That is your shortcut to go to previous marker. And the, the previous marker is control shift M or command shift M on a Mac and shift M to go to the next one. So right now I want to go to the previous one. So I'm just going to go control shift M and it jumps to the previous marker. If you have several, you can keep hitting that and it will keep jumping and going through these markers and landing on them. Now the difference between the markers here and the markers on the clips is that the markers will actually stay on these clips here. Uh, if I go to this clip right here and I hit a marker on a part that I like, right there, and I've got it selected, notice, and when I hit M, it adds the marker right down there onto the clip. Now if you double click on this clip here and it loads it into the source monitor, you'll notice it has that marker right there on, the, on, on that clip. One thing you should notice here is if I right click on this clip here and I go down to reveal in project, it's going to open up that clip inside of my project window. Now if I double click on this, it'll load that clip inside the monitor, into the source monitor here. And what you'll notice as we go through this is uh, this clip is a, basically this clip in the timeline is a copy of this clip, but notice what it's done here. It has added a marker even to the clip, not just the clip inside the timeline, but the clip inside of your project window. So now if you need to add specific notes to that, I go to my timeline here, select the clip, hit M again, and it brings up the dialog window for that clip, and now I can name this. 
and say Sundance sign and maybe put some notes on there if I wish. But I hit OK and it now has added that marker to the clip, which is also down here. These timeline markers here are only inside the timeline, not on the clips. But if you put it on a clip, it will actually add those markers to the clips inside of your project window as well. Now one kind of cool thing in Premiere that I really like here is, uh, let's, I'm going to jump to this marker here, I'm going to hit Control shift m to go back and it lands on that marker right there, I'm exactly on it, is if you hold down Option or Alt, you can click a single click on this and look what it does. It puts basically an in point and an out point on this marker here and you can grab these and you can stretch them out and make them longer. This way it's just making them easier to see, but it's giving a duration to this actual marker right here. You can double click on this now opens up the dialog window and you'll notice this duration right here it shows the time on your timeline at 51 seconds and 01 is where that starts and both notice that this duration is uh, three seconds and two frames if I don't make that larger I can grab it and drag it to the right let go hit OK and look what happens it makes that marker longer and this way you can actually kind of see these names as you get these big enough I'm gonna pull my endpoint out you can start seeing the actual name of the marker right there and as we zoom into it there you can see the full name so I can shrink that down but that's kind of nice because now you can see the full name of the markers in here. Now if you want to do that to a clip, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the next marker by hitting Shift M. It jumps to that marker there. And I want to do this one as well. I want to expand this one. But notice if I double click on, if I Alt double click on this or Option double click on it, it really does nothing. What you've got to do is you've got to load the clip into the source monitor first. Double click. It loads into the source monitor. And now go up here and hold down Option and click on it. And it, it has added those endpoints and outpoints. Now I can pull this across and stretch that out and you'll notice in the timeline it reflects that down here and we can see it's showing the full name up here and up here, down here it's showing the, almost the full name we're kind of zoomed out a bit so I can zoom in just by hitting plus plus or minus minus zooms out plus zooms in and now I've got the name of the entire marker there and now it spans a certain duration so kind of a cool little function there just for like uh uh, being able to view your markers a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to go to this one and do it really quick. Control Shift M, jump to that previous one, Alt double or Alt and click, and zoom up to here. Grab the out point, stretch it out. There we go. And if you pull this out so far, it's going to reveal the name, and then afterwards it will reveal the notes as well. It'll keep revealing all your notes, all your comments on that clip as well. I'm just going to do it enough to reveal the name there. But when you zoom in and out, it kind of compresses it and gets rid of that anyway. But now you can zoom in and kind of see those things. All right, another thing with markers here is if you look uh, at these all these markers right now and notice the color on all these, all these are pretty much the same color. They're all this green color. If you click on them, they've been selected, so they turn a lighter shade of green. But let's uh, double-click on one of these, and it opens up the, our dialog here, and uh, you do have all these marker colors. So if you're doing specific kind of notes, if you have multiple people working on one project and you want, and people are adding comments, you can have one person be green, one person be red, and so on. Or if you want to categorize them, say you like all your, uh, I don't know, all your B-roll shots, shots in one color and all your like interview shots or something else in another color you can actually change these just by clicking let's do another let's do some kind of heavy contrast here let's go to blue I'm going to select blue hit OK and notice that marker has changed blue so you can pretty much double click on any one of these and change it to whatever color you want and like I said if you're color coding this for a specific meaning you'll just have to kind of figure that out yourself but another little convenience to kind of uh, uh, organize our clips there but what's happening with all this organization is it's saving all these markers in a list so if you want to quickly access these clips what you can do is you can move over to your project area here I've got my markers window right there if you're not seeing it for some reason uh, you can go up to window you go to work and you can move down to markers and make sure this is checkmarked and it will pop up. So in this marker window over here, by default, what it's going to do is it's going to show all the markers that are in your timeline at that moment. You can search them by a little search window up here. Like if I want to find the pink lady, I can type in pink and it'll bring up all the comments that have the word pink in them. If I just want to find street, I can type in street and same thing. You narrow it down to anything you're looking for there depending on how extensive your notes are. You can also narrow these down by uh, the color codes that you have here. Like we've got our green. If I click on green, it'll narrow it down to just the green ones. You can actually choose more than one. You can say green and blue and then it just brings down brings up the green and blue ones so i can uncheck those and clear those there and now it's just showing all the uh, markers inside of my timeline now if i single click on one of these it will actually jump to the marker in my timeline and show where that is in my timeline so some kind of quick easy ways of navigating to those and finding those uh, those points in your timeline if i click on this one jumps to that one and if you double click on one it actually double clicks and opens up the dialog for that marker it jumps to the marker and it brings open the dialog 
Now, if you are searching specifically for the clip ones, these are not, this uh, marker window right now is only showing the timeline ones. So if I little, hit this little drop down on the, on the uh, markers menu here, uh, you can tell it to show all clip markers in the sequence. So now this will be all of your clip markers of these items that are in your sequence here. So now you can do a quick search on these as well. For now I'm down to the ones that you want. If I just want to type in Sundance, it brings open the ones with the word Sundance and colors and so on. Same as, uh, as a timeline. I'm going to put that back to show all the timelines. Uh, uncheck this here and turn it back to just the timeline markers. Now another thing you got to kind of understand about clip markers here, especially the clip markers here, is when you add a marker to a clip, uh, what is that is actually doing is it's it's uh, non-destructive, meaning it will not affect your original clip. But what this is doing is it's actually adding in your project area. And it's going to add what's called an XMP file. This XMP file, I'm going to go under preferences here and show you under media. Right now, this is checkmarked, this right clip marker, markers to XMP, and it's going to save it in these locations right here in these media cache databases. There adds a little document file that states that markers belong to the clips that we have here. If you got rid of those, if you just deleted that media cache folder or cleared it, uh, these would not show up but, uh, on another project. So watch this, I'm gonna make a brand new project here. I'm just gonna do new, new project, call this one stuff just for the heck of it here. I'm going to go to my media browser. I'm going to go find that exact same clip that I was just using, which was clip 9 under my red footage here. Here it is right here. I'm going to right-click on that and import it. I'm going to go to my project window, and that file has been imported. Now, this is a brand new project, not even referencing the other project that I had before. I'm going to grab that, drag it in my timeline, and look what it has. It has that exact same marker that's been saved on the XMP file that's found in your Adobe uh, folders that's saved on your computer. If I move computers and it's not accessing that, this will no longer show up, because right now it's on this computer that I'm working on. Uh, if you want to make sure that it comes with you with your project, you might want to go to your preferences and go to your media and change this location, the browser's location, but you got to do this per project and be very aware of what you're doing. And uh, hit browse and you can change that location to the hard drive that you're working off of. So when you grab that footage and move somewhere else on, a, on an external hard drive, it will uh, bring those markers with it. Now I'm going to open up my old project here again. So. Okay, so I've made a few more markers here. And the last thing I want to show here is what happens when you... Now, I've got these on very specific uh, time codes on, site, on this timeline here. And say we do some editing and we actually remove some clips. When I select these here and I do Option Delete and Delete Everything, notice it moves these uh, markers along with these clips right here. And usually that's on by default. But if it's not doing that... Usually what the issue is, is if you go up to marker, and uh, this might be unchecked right here. If that is unchecked, watch what happens when I delete these clips here. Option delete. Notice that those, are sta those stay there, and those notes are no longer over these clips inside the timeline. So if you make timeline notes specific to these clips here, and they're not on the, on, not on the actual clip, notice it ripples everything and does not ripple the markers as well. And now everything is out of place from this point forward. Like if these were director's notes saying, cut out this section, cut out this one, it's, it's, it's going to mess up all the notes after that. So you got to be very aware of that when you're... I'm going to hit undo here, and I'm going to go up to marker, the pull down, and make sure this is checkmarked, ripple sequence markers. And now when I select a range of clips and hit option, delete, and do a ripple delete, notice it leave it, it pulls everything down with it, and these stay in sync with what where they were originally uh, placed. So that's a quick rundown on markers. It's very helpful, uh, especially when you're trying to organize things and take notes on clips and trying to remember them. Oftentimes, I will drag dailies into my timeline, go through and make cl uh, clip notes on all the clips, and uh, and then this will be that will be saved in the metadata in this area over here in the markers window. And once again, if you need to do sequence or clips, you'll have to go in and toggle this to do either. So right now, it's on sequence. If I check mark this, it is going to be showing all my clip markers instead. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, post them and more to come later. Thank you.